Okay, we're going to move to today's speaker, who is Nancy Bishop. Nancy is a trainer and career coach. Um, she moved to Texas, where she completed a master's degree at the University of Texas to prepare for the most rewarding phase of her life. That's really, uh, that's amazing, Nancy. A lot of people can't say that. Um, for, for more than two decades, she has provided career coaching for thousands of people, many of whom were laid off and frustrated. Nancy has worked with people in a variety of set settings and currently is a trainer and career coach for Austin Community College Strategies for Today's Jobs Program. She will enthusiastically tell us more about ACC's free continuing education course that she prepares people for landing satisfying work. Please help me welcome Nancy. Thank you so very much for the invitation to be here today. I have been a long time supporter of everything that has been uh, here to support so many job seekers over the years from the time that Kathy even started Launchpad. I remember when it was launched uh, and then throughout the years, this group has done so many wonderful things and I have passed along information about activities. It, so now it's just a real joy to be with the group on a Good Friday, on, you know, beginning of Passover and a fun-filled weekend of scrambling to finish our taxes by Monday. And, you know, it just doesn't get much better than that, right? Uh, and I'm speaking on a topic that has really intrigued me because I have noticed this big surge of job seekers that say, I want to work remotely. And some, it was almost like, I don't care what it is. I want to work from home. Uh, and so I thought, you know, something, you know, is going on and it's huge. And then I started reflecting on my own experience. And back in March of 2020, I was sitting in the Austin Community College, they call it the Accelerator, the biggest computer lab in the galaxy, and it really is huge. And then I caught word that South by Southwest was going to be canceled. And so I thought, wow, you know, that's big. But we were getting ready for spring break. So I put my, you know, things that my office things and, and put them up and thought, well, I'll be back in a week. Well, that week lasted 21 months. You know, we didn't go back. I started working from home. I thought, okay, you know, and I, at first it was a little odd to do workshops remotely, to talk to students and others you know, virtually, but I thought, hey, you know, instead of driving to work, or I call it the demo demolition uh, derby, uh, going to work and counting how many people run red lights and stop signs and dart out in front of me, I thought, I'm taking a walk around the block. I'm starting the day off really a lot more relaxed. And I noticed I'm getting a lot more work done. Now, you know, being an incurable workaholic, that mean I pro meant I probably worked more hours. But on the other hand, I was real happy. And then, you know, as time passed and we thought, well, maybe we're going to go in and here comes another variant of the virus. Oh, well, we get to stay home a little longer and we became more and more comfortable. Then all of a sudden, lo and behold, one day in a virtual meeting, our supervisor announced time to return back to campus. And I wish I could have taken a picture of the screen of everybody's faces because it was like sheer horror. Oh no, are you, maybe can we do hybrid? No, but you know, can we <laughs> trying to negotiate? because we became, you know, very accustomed and comfortable and liked the idea of working remotely. Now, granted, you know, now that I'm back, you know, at campus, I love working with people one-on-one, face-to-face. 
I just finished an in-person four-week course. That's in a lot of ways preferable to have live human beings interacting. So, you know, I understand the pros and cons, but, you know, so today we're just really going to explore this. I want you to ask questions. There's going to be points where I want you to, um, you know, respond, give me your opinion. I don't like to just talk and talk. This is going to really, I want to facilitate a discussion. Uh, so for the next slide, what is happening, you know, I think really is a revolution and it has significantly been a huge increase in the number of people who have worked from home, you know, before that funny little virus um, spread around the world from where China or you know, there were about 6% of people who were, you know, working from home. It seemed like a lot were in my neighborhood and they worked for either Dell or IBM, but they worked from home. And then when the pandemic uh, hit, and you can go to the next screen, there were like about 30 anywhere from 33 to 50% of people who were sent home, you know, if they had the kind of job where they could um, work from home and they either had the equipment or were given equipment, then it was something that, you know, people did for, you know, safety. And then some people got called back to the office. Um, and that has, you know, some people, when they were called back to the office, they were among the people in the great resignation where they had responsibilities or even stronger preferences now to continue working from home. So on the next slide, you're going to see by the end of this year, on the next slide, you will see that we're gonna have 25% of professional jobs that will be work from home. Um, you know, because we found that a lot of businesses have been able to, um, you know, increase the technology, make it possible for people who could do a lot of you know, work exclusively from home, that they could uh, do that. And we're going to see this increase. So on the next slide, you know, we're seeing signs from some of the um, work from home websites that there's an increase in the number of fully remote jobs. You know, some are hybrid, but the fully remote. So we're just seeing this indication that the there's going to be an increase in the number of people who can, can work from home. So on the next slide, what I want to Nancy, do. Nancy, try to click and see if you can change it. Okay. Sure would be nice if I could, but let me try it this way. No. Okay. I think I can. Okay. Yay. Okay. I can on this. So. For our group here this morning, let's see if you're a candidate for remote work. Um, and so I'm gonna do a very quick survey. There are 10 questions. Get out your pencil and paper and just mark a little you know, X for the times that you respond with a, a yes. I am. So, I hope. Are y'all seeing something that's covering? Weird. That's kind of covering one of the slides that yeah. I'm showing. You see it. I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Let me see if I can remove it. Oh, there it is. There. Okay. Good. Okay. So here's here's a very quick assessment. First one is you have to consider. 
can you do the kind of work you do at home? You know, so, you know, there are some positions that you really have to show up at the office or service oriented can only, you know, be done off site. Two, do you, does your home office or do you have access to a computer printer and the essential equipment? Three, you know, will your possibly noisy family members, roommates, and needy pets, you know, distract you? They won't distract you. So as long as that won't be a distraction, I've had to train my cats. But as long as it's not a distraction, you'll be okay. So that would, so can you, and then four is, can you avoid frequent trips to the refrigerator and, quote, working on the beach? Five, you know, do you tend to be more introverted and you won't miss in-person contact? Uh, six, you can avoid, I mean, wait, six is you can advance your career without face-to-face -face brown nosing. Uh, seven, I can maintain work-life balance by not, not working excessive overtime, sneaking back into the office, even when you know you don't need to be working, but given the choice of household chores and working, you work those extra hours. Eight, um, I can learn a new job without in-person training and staff support. Uh, nine, I'm tech savvy and can address Wi-Fi, computer, and software issues. And 10, I won't become a Zoom zombie after excessive virtual meetings. So count up the number of yeses. Give you a minute to do that. And then in chat, We'll see how you will fare. Whoops. If you have seven to 10 yeses, you will likely be happy working remotely. Um, four to six, a hybrid where you work some in an office setting, some in, why is it doing that? Hmm. Anyway, okay, let me go back. Okay, yeah, the four to six is, yeah, where you have some days in the office, some days at home. One to three points, you're probably going to be a lot happier working on site. Uh, so in chat, and I know James and Shannon are going to, Help me monitor that. See how you fare. Uh, I think Logan mentioned that the hybrid would work better for you. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. So, and Jeff, hybrid. Curtis, hybrid. And Jeff does need people too. And so ladies, yeah, I seven think, for ladies. I think we okay. have five hybrids. Mm hmm Yep. And then uh, three, uh, seven to 10 points. They'll be happy working remotely. And then a few people said that they, better, they work better on site. Interesting. Well, you know, it's, and John, hybrid. Good. Well, I was just real curious to see how this group compared with some other surveys that have been done. Uh, and so we're going to look at that to see. Okay. Nancy, this is John. Yes. yes. I take a little bit of issue with using the term brown nosing for what 
you know, an employee would do in person in the office. Um, for instance, I was working on a, on a project with another consultant. The client wanted him to work. They were running a processes overnight. So he was working like seven to seven, five days a week and billing 60 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And our bosses fired him because he did not respond to emails that they the same day that they sent at eight or nine in the morning. And they accused him of working on his own projects, even though he was billing and the customer was happy uh, because after he went to sleep, he didn't do the email. You know, obviously he gets, he goes to sleep at seven in the morning. They send stuff that morning. They don't get anything back. He gets up at six or seven, gets going at seven, sees the emails, responds to them past 7 p.m. They don't get them till the day after. And there is this whole syndrome of kind of out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to brown nose to be seen to be doing good work and need to be seen in front of your boss sometimes. Well, John, and I I was just trying to add a tiny bit of humor, even though what happened to this unfortunate person was wrong. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I know sometimes the humor, I didn't mean it to be. Um, no, 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 only, not, not, a, not a problem. Um, yeah. But I mean, there's, you know, it's like there are stories after story after story of the people who get in front of the bosses and are seen face to face, get the promotions and stuff. Right. So and, I, you and know, I think it, mm-hmm. it's a real big problem with remote work for anybody who wants to stay with someplace a long time, who wants job okay. stability, I think. Absolutely. And you have to consider that because, you know, if you're on that upward mobility track and you recognize that you need to have more face time with, uh, you know, important people, you know, in your company, then you'd want to really reconsider, you know, it's working exclusively up from home. Uh, So... Um, yeah, so we will look at, you know, what makes remote work attractive and what are some of the reasons why you think some people prefer remote work? You know, what are, what are the pluses? And I'll let you just mention something in chat or go off mute, but I just want you to kind of imagine the advantages and then we'll look at what's been reported. And let's see. Um, The traffic, Ruth Ann mentions, and Jeff too. And let's see what the sense of freedom and empowerment. Yeah, I mean, to have a little more control over your life. Um, you know, what's been reported is especially the, the big one is the increase in productivity with fewer distractions when you can focus with out the noise and you know, the talkative coworkers. And then, um, you know, people said, yeah, it was good for their mental health. And what I found interesting that 84% uh, said they'd be happier working when the pandemic is behind us, they would even be willing to take a pay cut. And they recognized, you know, I've already been saving money on gas and maybe a new spring outfit or, you know, one, you know, the lunches that people tend to buy. Um, so let's see, Kathy had mentioned a relative who moved to Austin after getting permission to work remotely. And she was told she'd never have a people management job as long as She was remote. She applied for a management position and was chosen, even though COVID forced all the managers to work remotely. 
Monday, she starts a new management job with Salesforce. Well, good, paying 32% more than her previous job. Hmm. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so you can see the advantages. Now, let's think about some disadvantages. What, what would you, we've kind of heard from the out of sight, out of mind you know, you know, really unfortunate situations, but, you know, what, what would you think would be some disadvantages? Nancy, I think this is John again. Uh, I think bad management, which comes from that situation I told you about, uh, is one of them because I, I think remote work takes a different style of management that a lot of companies are not training for. Managers need to mm -hmm. develop trust with their employees. They need to set goals. And a lot of managers want to, you know, I mean, I have literally had managers who stood behind my chair and tapped their foot mm -hmm. when they thought I should be getting off the phone. Um, so, you know, that, that micromanaging, that sense of, of, you know, you know, managers being able to tell their employees, set the goals and let them go and let them do it and set reasonable goals. Uh, I don't think that's being taught a lot, and I don't think managers are being trained to manage remotely very well yet. Yeah, I think that is a really good point, because I would imagine that there's not a lot of training that's even developed for managers to be able to understand how to manage differently, and that has led to um, some, you know, uh, really, like you said, the oppressive management style, um, sometimes too many virtual meetings that, and that aren't conducted real efficiently and that are time wasters, just all sorts of things that can, can happen. Absolutely. Well, yeah, the whole culture, uh, needs to be addressed. If you're going to have either hybrid or fully remote workers, you know, I think management needs to think that through, you know, how do we do this best so people are happy? Um, I, you know, I've been reading on uh, Austin Digital Jobs and uh, uh, Remote Digital Jobs, two of the Facebook forums, mm -hmm. uh, how so many managers are all about control. You know, it's about punching the clock. You be here at nine, not 9.01. We own, you know, you only get a 15 minute break, not a 16 minute break. There's a lot of pushback with this youngest generation and even uh, Gen X and Gen Y about it. But, uh, you know, I think there's that old thought, if, if we hire you, we own you eight hours a day or 12 hours a day or whatever. Well, let's let's put the word out on places not to work and build a list of uh, you know, the, you know, the companies with better management, you know, and especially if they do have some remote or hybrid workers to know how to do that. Uh, and, you know, admittedly, you know, we're going to look at, we were talking about some of the, the drawbacks and, you know, a big one is building relationships with coworkers. You know, that's one thing now that, you know, I'm, you know, back working um, in at the office. I, I know it is wonderful to be able to turn to a coworker for a project that we're working on and have that instant collaboration that, that always took longer when we were working remotely. Um, Forty-six percent of people just felt isolated. You know, many decades ago, when I was laid off from a job, I did contract writing and thought, "Oh, this is fine." And people said, "Well, how can you stay motivated?" I said, "I keep my stack of bills right next to me, and I just work all day long." You know, thinking I'm going to be working down this uh, stack of bills, so that was never a problem. But the isolation. Yeah, you know, I had, you know, I was talking to my dog and my cat. And when they started talking back to me, I thought it is time for me to find a job back in the office. 
Um, that was different, though. That was kind of a contract short term until I found a better job. Um, now that it's different, I think when it's remote and we have, you know, the, the zooms and being able to have the, the screen time. Um, another, you know, biggie is separating work from personal life. And I don't know if any of you have had the problem that I do with it's so easy to come back into your little office and turn on the computer and start looking at office emails and thinking, oh, well, to get a jump on tomorrow, I can just work some tonight. So, yeah, the, the separation can be an issue. Um, and Ruth Ann mentioned I worked on my, uh, my own time to meet my team lead in person after work and meeting for coffee, but she was willing to do that. This is where the hybrid can work better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think actually we're gonna see that the, sorry, the trying to get slides to advance, it doesn't wanna do it, okay. Um, the hybrid actually in surveys have been the most popular, you know, and they, Gallup News did a, uh, survey and found that when people tried remote work, 91% who worked all or some of the time wanted to continue the arrangement, but 54% said they would like to split their time. So that's the hybrid model. 37% would like to work from home exclusively and 9% wanted to return to the office full time. So, yeah, I think, you know, having the best of both worlds hybrid for, you know, a lot of people, but then there's going to be some on either end who might like to work exclusively or others who say, you know, I, I can work better, uh, you know, if I'm there, you know, in an office setting. So they are, there are many different occupations and industries where you can work from home. So on the screen, you see some of the popular types of jobs. Help me add to this list. What else do you see besides some of the ones listed, like the project manager, the graphic designer, the you know, writer, editor, sales? We have a board member who works as a contact tracer for COVID for Facebook. Oh, she, perfect. She works from home. <clears throat> yeah. And it's been interesting to me when I've met people who've worked uh, for state agencies. Somebody mentioned the federal government. Um, you know, some of them are have regular jobs, other, you know, contractors, investors, uh, so, you know, there's a lot that you can do from home, you know, especially in the tech field, but now, you know, people are finding many different ways to work from home. So now it's like, how can you find one of these jobs? So I'm going to just throw out a few ideas of how to search for a remote job. And I want you to add to this because here's where if you want to consider a rem you know, remote work and want to conduct an effective job search, you know, one of the first things is to not, you know, even though I'm going to have a slide of, in a minute about here are the best job boards for remote work. Well, you don't want to spend 90% of your time chasing after remote job leads on a job board when, you know, some of the companies may be fine, but others, you're going to find out so much more if you talk to people, share information, you know, at Launchpad about better opportunities, um, places that have the, you know, reputation for treating employees better. 
um, you can certainly, you know, go to one of Kathy's resume classes and if you're targeting remote work, think, how can I put some keywords in my resume and customize it to highlight my ability to work from home? If you've done it before, highlight that or, you know, put in the hard skills, soft skills about how, how you would be uh, successful in working remotely. And certainly uh, practice the virtual job interviews. I know I would encourage you to go on the Launchpad's website like I did and listen to what Kim and Mike Barnes suggested in their presentation in uh, May of 2021 about, you know, how to have the right lighting and to, you know, just have that visual appeal virtually so you make the most of, you know, those remote job interviews because that will make a huge difference. Now, what, what else would you suggest? Well, Nancy, there's a whole uh, area that I don't think we've touched on at Launchpad. Uh, there are these companies that have contract remote jobs and they pay like between 14 and 18 dollars and I've got a friend who who does that and sometimes she'll work 60 hours a week she'll have multiple contracts she did one for like OnStar where she was answering people who press their OnStar buttons in their GM cars and she arranges to have a tow or somebody bring them gas or you know uh help them with directions or that kind of thing and there she's also done one for Victoria's Secret Hmm. where she was, uh, you know, an advisor for women wanting to buy lingerie online. Um, she did, she found one of these for FEMA and did it through a, through an agency. So she had to buy her own computer up to their standards, set it all up. And then she had to do some training for some of them unpaid. And then, but then she was on a contract for a few months at a certain rate and that sort of thing. So there's all this work out there that you can get. It doesn't pay a lot, but, you know, it is definitely remote work and uh, available. Right. And that's a, a good thing to mention that it's not just the regular jobs. It's the contract, the gig jobs, the, you know, different ways of working. And um, it was interesting to me to see how much more I was just curious because I know I did some contract writing back in the day uh, and the prices have not increased all that much. So, but I'm sure there's much better, you know, paying jobs that uh, you just have to, you know, figure out, you know, where can I uncover those job leads? I don't want to necessarily compete with everybody across the country for some of those jobs. Because one thing about remote work is, you know, you could sign up with a company in New York or Indiana or wherever, you know. Uh, and so you, you know, you want to just consider, um, you know, I mean, look at it carefully, look at, um, you know, just check it out on Glassdoor in every way possible to make sure it's, it's you know, something that you can do. Um, now, one of her favorites was as a, as chat support. So she didn't actually mm -hmm. have to talk to anybody. She could just, you know, type answers and stuff. Oh, interesting. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and so, I mean, you could have a day job, but you could have one of these contracts at night doing some sort of support for something uh, and, uh, you know, bring in some extra money or in between jobs, it could help you cover the uh, rent or mortgage or something. Right. Oh, you know, there are those options out there. Absolutely. And Ruth Ann mentioned something. And, and because we had Miles Wallace from Peak Performers, uh, that the longer term temp jobs for state agencies uh, can pay much higher than the $19 per hour, too. And that, you know, they are, um, you know, bringing in people with different skill sets. They're very, when they mention, you know, preference for people with disabilities, that's very broad. 
somebody told me once from peak performers, do you have hay fever? Like who doesn't have hay fever in Austin? You know, so, you know, you'd qualify. Uh, so good. So there are the remote work websites, flex jobs. I hear people mention flex jobs most often. I've seen some really good articles on we work remotely and virtual vocations. I love Indeed, you know, because you can now when you're fil putting your filters on for your job search, you can, if you're interested in remote work, you just, you know, use that. And then, of course, the Muse, Freelancer, and Upwork. Um, so I did a quick survey because on Indeed, there's, if you do put in remote in Austin, and they'll start out with the Austin-based companies, and then they'll add companies from all over the country, there were 9,054 jobs a couple of days ago when I checked it. So quite a few. And I just, you know, just to get an idea of some of the variety of jobs, you know, and everything from insurance to healthcare to even Nordstrom's, you know, that kind of surprised me, uh, Department of Family and Protective Services. So you get an idea of some of the variety. Um, last year for the special Career Ready Week that Austin Community College has every semester, I did a presentation with Melissa Tota on avoiding the remote job scams because it's even easier to do uh, job seekers for remote jobs because it, you could be communicating with a company that, you know, it's like, okay, this company's based in New Jersey, don't know a lot. But then, you know, in, in a very short time, they said, well, we want to hire you and they want all of your personal information. Be very careful. Check the company out. Certainly don't respond to a remote job if there's misspellings or you can't track down the company website. And then there's always the, wow, this job pays the big bucks, but it's not asking for a lot. You know, if it's, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So avoid those scams. And keep in mind that, you know, the, you know, in the future, we're only going to see an increase in the number of remote jobs. I mean, the, you know, for all of us, you know, we're going to see it. I mean, the generation coming in behind us, it's going to be a lot of folks who are going to consider, you know, how do I want to work? You know, do I want to work sometime in the office, out of the office, get a lot more freedom? It's just, you know, changing the whole world of work. They say eventually 50% of the workforce will be working remotely. We may see an exodus from some of the larger cities. So that, you know, will make a difference. Companies may reconsider, do they need to, you know, expand into larger office space? Or can they keep some people at home or have a hybrid where people share workspace? So um, before I get, I've got a little kind of commercial about a program at Austin Community College, but I'd like to open up um, for questions. And I see some of you on chat have, let me catch up with chat. Um, oh, it's just some something about the glass door. And thank you, Jeff, for, uh, answering Ruth Ann's question about that. But as far as remote work, what else would you like to bring up?
And is this something that as part of your job search, you are looking out for? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. One thing I like about, you know, the fact that this has revolutionized the workforce is that I think it's going to open up opportunities for people to work longer. Um, worked with many, many people 50 and older when I worked at Workforce Solutions. I think it's going to help people who uh, have disabilities who can now, you know, find more work at home opportunities give people with families more flexibility and they're going to be a lot happier um, when they can take, you know, have more work-life balance and time uh, for, you know, kids and family members. So, um, yeah, so Clarissa mentions that you prefer remote you mentioned the noise. I know yesterday, as I was, um, you know, working away and trying to focus on a project, I literally had to put in, you know, my, my kind of working jazz music that I listened to drown out the, and, and where I work, you can hear professors lecturing in the accelerator, the coworkers were getting ready for an event. So there was a buzz all around me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the hybrid would have been nice for me yesterday. Um, well, and so Nancy, Rizan mentioned that, yes. Oh, no, I was just thinking back. Uh, I started off in tech, in tech support. And so all of that was open plan with headsets on it and kind of clamorous. But when I moved into training, I got my own office at Pervasive and I pretty much had my own office for like seven, eight years after the first year. Um, and then again, when I was a sales engineer at Iconics, I had an office, but you don't see offices very much. So, but maybe with more people working remotely, companies will go back to giving people who are in the office, actual offices with closing doors. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And, yeah. you know, it was, I left my door open almost all the time because I wanted people to swing by and, and you know, chat or whatever. Um, but when I needed to, when I needed to be on a call, I could close the door, which was just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it could, you know, certainly free up that extra space, um, particularly like Ruth Ann mentioned that, uh, she's hoping when things settle down to to see the remote work kind of more 50 50 some remote some in the office but anyway that kind of gives us uh you know hope that we would if we do when we do go into the office if we go into the office it's under better working conditions sure but that could be um, something you bring up in the in the interview you know if mm -hmm. i have to go into the office since a lot of people are working remotely can I have an office with a door so that I can focus and get more done? You know, things like that. Right. What is your policy on offices with doors? Is right. everybody, oh, you know, what does your office look like? Is it open plan when I come in? Um, so, you know, those are things I, I just thought of and hadn't considered before. Yeah. What uh, I, what I see is more likely happening and I'm hearing more and more of are the, uh, companies that are setting up cube spaces that are reserved by the day and people don't have assigned offices if you're working a hybrid schedule. So it's going to be much more like a, you know, kind of working out of a Starbucks environment or working in a place where you just grab a table or grab a desk or grab a cube when you come into the office for the day. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure you're right, and, and that's my sense. But I mean, wouldn't it be nice if they looked at what was the preferred? I would think some companies will look at what's preferred by their employees and want to do that because everybody's complaining that talent's so hard to find. Or possibly yeah, but I, think, I think from an economic perspective, they're not going to want to 
pay for square footage that is not used to two days out of the week. Absolutely. But they're not going to want to give it. somebody a, a permanent office space if they're not there half the time. Well, but you wouldn't have to give it a permanent office space. They could actually be in all you could just come in and have an office with a closed door that is assigned. Oh, yeah, to, yeah. So you could reserve a cube or reserve an office for the day and just kind of yeah. alternate and have every, you know, the manager just kind of has that schedule set up. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, Really appreciate all of the comments, so thank you. Thank you, Nancy.